Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Evil Dead Rise, which is one of my most anticipated movies of the year because I love Evil Dead. Look at this box that I have for the 4K Blu-rays and of course the Ash vs. Evil Dead show, which I still have yet to watch, which I'm probably going to start watching now after watching Evil Dead Rise because I love these movies. And so of course we're going to be talking about spoilers for Evil Dead Rise, so if you have not gotten a chance to see it in the theater, and if you're not squeamish and you can handle an Evil Dead type movie, definitely go check this one out because the more I think about this movie and the more I talk about this movie, the more I absolutely love everything in it. So let's just get right into the movie. So what is Evil Dead Rise about? Well, essentially it's an Evil Dead movie, so you're going to have a bunch of characters stumble upon the Book of the Dead that's going to unleash all the Deadites where they're going to all tear each other apart in very gruesome and brutal and also campy ways because this is a franchise started by the one and the only Sam Raimi. And so, of course, you're going to have all the great things that are known for Evil Dead, but what makes this movie stand out a little bit more than all the other ones is the fact that it follows a family instead of a group of friends. And because of this, you instantly get more of a connection with these characters because of course they are family and it's written in a very natural way where they feel like they've known each other for so long and they rely on each other so desperately because they are family. Of course, you have a mother and her children, but you also have the two sisters in this movie, Beth and Ellie, who also have a very, I guess, struggling relationship between each other. They feel very distant and they have reasons why they've kind of split apart. You have Beth's character who finds out at the beginning of this movie that she is pregnant and she doesn't know how she feels about having a family because of course, Ellie is now a single mother and so she's struggling to take care of her own kids now you throw another kid in this mix how is she going to be as a mother when she sees her own sister struggling with this very same thing and so the first act of this movie really does set up these characters in a very engaging way and these kids also are not very obnoxious and annoying I actually really did like all the kids in this movie and yes they make some dumb decisions because every single evil dead movie needs to have something to happen at the beginning of the movie that causes you know the book to be found them to read off the things inside the book and pretty much every single time you kind of push it off as characters being really dumb and idiotic, but I think this movie has two excuses that I think work really well. For one, he is a kid, so you're going to give him just a little bit of leeway because of that. I think you can excuse some of his behavior because of that, but also he has a very strong need to help his mother because he is the oldest sibling, and they are struggling. This apartment complex that they live in is literally falling apart after this earthquake, and so they are very much on the very edge of losing their apartment. They're losing you know, their livelihood. They have no home to go into, and so once this safe is unveiled underneath this apartment complex that used to be a bank, he thinks maybe he can find something of value in there and he's also very into music and so when he finds this book that feels like very interesting maybe it has some value to it and also these records that he wants to play because of course he has some sort of like connection with music and being a DJ of sorts on his very own merits and so there's reasons for him to grab this stuff and to take it and what even pushes this into a more interesting idea is once he starts playing it and his sister starts you know being too scared like you need to get rid of that thing immediately but he is still curious and he plays these records and as the records are playing things get more and more intense and he even himself wants to stop it and he regrets it immediately and he feels so much guilt over everything and he's kind of the inciting incident of the movie you feel for these characters very much and I think the fact that it's a bunch of kids and it's an evil dead movie and you know how brutal these evil dead movies are are they going to do it to these very young characters and it's an Evil Dead movie. Of course, this movie is going to be brutal, even when it comes to the children in this movie. Of course, the first character that's going to be possessed in this movie is going to be the mother. And so you also have a dynamic between these kids and their mother and how you really feel terrified for them because they're seeing a very traumatic event. I have the Dr. Sleep poster up here because I love The Shining. And I think the director has two very distinct influences for this movie. Of course, you know, it's very much an Evil Dead movie. And so you have those iconic Evil Dead shots where you see the perspective of the demon flying into the mother and having the entire scene in the elevator that feels extremely evil dead but later on in the movie when you get another elevator scene and it's filling with blood and all the blood starts pouring out is very much the shining but then also you have a connection with you know in the shining you have danny's father going after him trying to kill him throughout the entire movie and this time you have these kids mother trying to kill them the entire time so i feel like lee corona does a great job not only paying homage to sam raimi's earlier evil dead films but also paying homage to his influences like stanley kubrick with the shining because he does a phenomenal job directing this movie and all the horror sequences, all the tension that is built in this film feels at the level of, I guess, the Evil Dead remake, which I'll get into my problems with the Evil Dead remake, because I think these two films are actually pretty comparable in some very interesting ways and have a very distinct difference, which I'll get into in a minute. But the intensity and the gruesomeness of this movie may not be as over the top and as, I guess, brutal as the Evil Dead remake, but it is still incredibly intense and the tension and the scares in this movie feel so incredibly strong while also having that gleeful joy that you have watching a Sam Raimi movie. One of my favorite sequences in this movie is once the mother gets locked out into the hallway you have all the other neighbors trying to deal with her at this point and you have Beth looking through the the peephole of the front door and you get to see her just absolutely go 
out on a rampage killing all these other neighbors inside of this hallway sequence. It is so incredibly good and you know it's going to be an Evil Dead movie when she literally bites somebody's eye out and spits it into somebody else's mouth and he starts suffocating on it and she just goes nuts and it's so, so entertaining and that is why I think that this movie works really well because yes, it is very intense and very brutal and there's a lot of things that you look at this movie and you cringe in your seat because of the uncomfortable nature of what you're watching on the screen but it also has a sort of levity because of how over the top and how I guess campy it can be in very brief moments. So a great example of that is also the youngest kid in this movie who creates this staff called Staphne which she creates basically by cutting the head off of a doll and you think is this kid going to be one of those kids in a horror movie that's really dark and messed up but no she just wants to cut the head off of this doll so she can put it on a staff because if there's ghosts in this old apartment complex she wants to be able to scare the ghosts away so she has this staff that she uses to fight off the deadites at one point in this movie that is just like you can only see something like this in as brutal of a horror horror movie in an Evil Dead film. That's This is the only type of movie where you can have this weird, like, gleeful, joyous, goofy, campy moments in a very serious and brutal horror movie. But let's get a little bit more into the characters of this movie. And you know, the Evil Dead movies are not really known for having great and deep characterization. Even in the original trilogy, Ash is a great character that you love to watch throughout everything that he is in. And I can't wait to watch Ash Evil Dead to see more of Bruce Campbell because of how great he is in that role. But you never really get to know him in a more of a deeper way than the surface level in that original trilogy. And so in this film, you really do dive a lot into Beth's character and her dynamic between the youngest daughter in this movie that gave me a lot of a Ripley and Newt sort of feel from Aliens and I love the fact that I'm comparing these characters to Newt and Ripley and like I said when you have a character like Beth who is not really expecting to be a mother and she doesn't know if she will be a good mother and you have the overall theme of this movie if I were to give this movie just an overall theme it's about motherhood I think one very clear point in this movie that really hammers that home is once Ellie is first taken by the Deadite she has one last moment where she kind of peeks through before she dies and is fully transformed into a Deadite where she says take care of my babies and that is her last words to her sister and she takes that very wholeheartedly and just all these family members that are now being terrorized by their own mother are all trying to protect each other which is another thing that feels a little more unique to an evil dead movie because for the most part you get to see these characters all struggle and fight against the deadites but you never really get to see them take care of each other in a very passionate way and that's exactly what you get in this film. Bridget was another great character in this movie and really whenever any of the kids were in danger particularly Cassie all the other siblings would jump in front of the deadite mother in order to protect Cassie at all all costs and Bridget was the first one to go of all the kids in that eyeball scene where the the razor is going up to her eye and she barely turns her head in time to protect herself that was one of the most intense scenes in the movie and of course that turns her into one of the deadites and of course the cheese grater scene happens immediately after this and all these sequences were so incredibly tense but when Bridget went that was really the moment where I realized this movie is not afraid to go for these kids in very brutal ways and then Danny's the next one to go and at one point all the deadites kind of form together into this crumbled up together monster creature thing that reminds me a lot of the thing that was absolutely terrifying and I loved every second of all of that as well. And once Beth and Cassie have the Deadites clumped up together in this one giant monster thing, they go down in the elevator and you get that great shining reference with the blood in the elevator and all that stuff transpires. Once she gets in the parking garage and there's a wood chipper down there, you know that wood chipper is either going to be used to absolutely just brutalize Beth or the Deadites. And of course, Beth gets the upper hand. She uses the chainsaw to shove the thing inside of the wood chipper and it is a gloriously bloody scene. That is something that you only get out of an evil dead movie and it was extremely satisfying to see both Beth and Cassie particularly turning off the the wood chipper at the right times and turning it back on to get the deadites it was so good I loved this entire ending sequence it was so intense and it's just so satisfying to watch these two characters take out these deadites in a very satisfying way and now I want to bring back up the Evil Dead remake because like I said I mentioned it earlier in this review and how these two movies are kind of similar in terms of its intensity with the practical bloody effects in a more modern era that's kind of separated from the 90s campy that was in the original Sam Raimi Evil Dead movies and I think what the, the the problem I guess I have with the Evil Dead remake is it feels so mean-spirited it feels like you don't care about any of these characters and you're just watching these characters be brutalized in very very just gruesome ways and it's not like you're watching the Deadites be dismembered you're watching our main characters get dismembered and you're not feeling any remorse for it at all because they had no characterization whatsoever besides the main character in that film and as great as that movie is you know filmed is very well made Fel Fetty Alvarez does a great job directing the Evil Dead remake but it really just feels gross and just really mean-spirited and cruel for absolutely no reason and the difference between that movie and this movie really is that in this movie yes there is a lot of brutal sequences I don't think it's nearly as brutal and as bloody and as gruesome as Fede Alvarez's Evil Dead remake was 
was, but I think the difference is in this movie, you're watching the Deadites be brutalized. You're watching the, the villains of the movie be torn apart rather than our heroes be torn apart, and you actually care about the characters just enough to have a lot of fun moments in this movie that also has some campiness in it. I didn't really feel any campy tones in the Evil Dead remake, whereas this one, it has some fun. It has some really fun moments. Like I said, the entire scene with the mood chipper is so joyous to see her finally get the chainsaw. It feels like Evil Dead. The eyeball scene earlier in the movie, it really does capture what Sam Raimi did very well in the first Evil Dead movie. And I think that is where there's a divide in the fan base for Evil Dead when it comes to the first one and the second one. There are fans like myself who love the original Evil Dead because it has more of a focus on the horror aspects of the Evil Dead franchise. Or you're a fan of Evil Dead 2, which has more of a focus on the campy and goofy sides of the Evil Dead franchise. And of course, then you have Ash vs. Evil Dead, which is also the campy tone. Then you have the Evil Dead remake, which is the more serious and brutal tone. And I think this movie strikes a good little balance where, yes, it is a little bit more towards the first Evil Dead movie. That is why I love this movie so very much, because it focuses more on horror than it does on the campiness. But it doesn't lose the campiness, which I think is very important for this movie. And so it just resulted in a film that I absolutely loved. In terms of any negatives that I really have about this movie... Really, the only one is the logic of how nobody else in this apartment complex heard any of the chaos that was happening besides the neighbors on the very same floor. Like, not even anybody, the floor directly beneath them, heard anything. And, of course, you have the other neighbor who's living on the fifth floor go down to the, the parking garage and sees all the blood. And she eventually gets, you know, infected or possessed by the deadites. And that leads to the opening scene of everything that happens at the one triangular cabin house. Which, if you own a triangular cabin, you know you're just asking to be in a horror movie. Because who in the world would stay at a place like that? That, but that is what ties in the whole opening scene of this movie and that's really my only flaw is the logic of everybody else in this apartment complex not hearing all the chaos that happens especially in the parking garage but Besides that, I absolutely loved Lee Cronin's Evil Dead Rise. He does a great job directing it. I love this franchise so very much. I cannot wait to watch Ash vs. Evil Dead, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing all your guys' thoughts on this movie as well. So if you guys did enjoy this video, like I said, leave a comment down below. Also, leave a like on this video, and also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more reviews just like this one. I just wrapped up my reviews for The Mandalorian. The season finale was just yesterday, and so definitely go check out that review. I had a lot of fun talking about Mandalorian. I cannot wait for Ahsoka and all that stuff, but also just normal movie reviews from here on out. Of course, I'll be reviewing Bo is Afraid. I cannot wait to watch. I'm actually going to be watching it in Los Angeles because I'm going on vacation there in just a little bit here. So cannot wait to talk about all those movies ahead in the future. So thanks everybody for watching. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, comment down below, and I hope to see you all in my next one.